What's up you guys, this is Sweet Guns and I'm playing Game of Thrones. This will be our third part in this Let's Play series. And let's play. Father, much excitement here in King's Landing for the coming wedding. Lady Marjorie has proven to be quite popular throughout the city. I do wish you and Mother could come, although I know it would be impossible under the circumstances. I miss all of you. And I look forward to the day you can. Asha sent me this coin, to remember him. What a strange place, Essos. Ethan made this for me. It was very kind of Lady Marjorie to give this to me. It once belonged to Lady Elena. Wonders Made by Man, by Lomas Longstrider. A gift from Roderick. I hope to see them all someday. King's Landing. I wonder if it's sunny at Ironrath today. It troubles me to even ask this of you. But you must appeal to Lady Marjorie to intervene on our behalf. She is our best hope, and can be a powerful ally. Especially now when your family so desperately needs her help. Hmm. Let's One moment. Oh, sorry, milady. I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I can come back later if you'd like. Let him in. No, it's fine. Come in. Damn it. Is it me Begging or your does pardon, it lady, like... but you are right. If you don't mind my asking. You seem rather upset. I'm just worried about my family. Ah, letter from home, is it? It's kind of you to ask. Of course, my lady. You've always been kind to me. Please hurry if you can. Lady Marjorie will be here any minute. Of course, my lady. You work for Lady Marjorie? I may be wrong. But it seems like you do. I'm her handmaiden. That's what I thought. I've seen you with her before. You seem like good friends. I saw Lady Marjorie just this morning, outside the Royal Sept, talking to Queen Cersei. Cersei? They appear to be having some sort of disagreement. I couldn't hear much, but... It was definitely an argument. What did they say? I couldn't make out much, but I know they were talking about the Starks and, and House Forrester. House Forrester? Oh, this isn't good. I hope you're not in any kind of trouble. But I thought you ought to know. Most people don't tend to notice a cold boy. Not in King's Landing, with so many lords and ladies about. You see and hear all sorts of things when people don't even know you're there. Good night, my lady. Man, I, I don't know if there's something wrong with my graphic or something, but everything just looks Lady Marjorie, like you're pit. early. I was hoping there would be time for us to talk. Come, there's something we must discuss. From the day you arrived in Highgarden, I've thought of you more as a friend than as my handmaiden. A dear friend, in fact. Thank you, my lady. And you know how I feel about what's happened to your family. I feel your pain as if it were my own. What you've suffered is beyond imagining. And your poor family as well. My family wrote me, my lady. I don't doubt they must be overcome with grief. But you must not despair. 
we will get through this together. You must understand there are limits to what I can say, especially here in King's Landing, now that I am to be Queen. To have a handmaiden from the North whose family fought for Rob Stark. It raises questions at a time I can least afford. Cersei herself cornered me this morning outside the Royal Sept. She mentioned the Northern Girl in my service, and she painted you a traitor. She was very pleased with herself. Her face was full of mirth as she said it. I'm not, I'm not a, a traitor. traitor. <laughs> of course not. It's only an excuse to torment you, and by extension, me. She demands an audience. She wants an apology oh, of some sort. <laughs> for what, I don't tough. know, but she's waiting for us now, and I promised I would bring you to her. I wouldn't ask this of you if it were not important. I cannot afford any conflict with Cersei with the wedding so near. What do I say? Find a way to appease her. Humor oh, her. That, Tell her what she wants that's to hear. almost impossible. See if the Queen Regent is ready to receive us. You'll be fine. I know you will. You may feel one thing, but you must say another. Very subtle hint right there. <laughs> Good luck. Wait, you can wh do this. Where are all the people? Th that's it. Just, just a couple of us. Oh, okay. I, I see some people right there. Ah, Lady Marjorie. Aren't you looking lovely this evening? Lord Tyrion. Your Grace? With your permission, allow me to introduce Lady Mira of House Forrester. Well, <laughs> your grace, the girl knows her courtesies. Impressive. You may rise. House Forrester is a northern house loyal to the king. Are they? I beg your pardon, your grace. I wasn't talking to you. I want to hear from the girl. Is your family loyal to the king? Perhaps you should ask the new Lord Forrester. He's not here, is he? She is. The girl can speak for her house. Joffrey is the one true king, your grace. Hmm. And yet. For centuries, the Foresters have been loyal bannermen to House Stark. A house of traitors. Um, they, they were the Wardens of the North. We all served at the pleasure of the king. Clever girl. Oh. Okay. Perhaps too clever for her own good. The girl did what? name Joffrey as the one true king. Is your house willing to swear fealty to your new liege lord, Roos Bolton? Hmm. He Yo. is the oh. warden of the north, F. your grace. Maybe I should have said absolutely. He is. And I, the Queen Regent, and Tyrion, the Master of Coin. The girl has a remarkable talent for answering questions while, in fact, saying nothing at all. Uh, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> Old allegiances are not easily abandoned. But now that the war is over, we must look to rebuild and forge new alliances. There are ships and shields to be built, and Joffrey will need a steady supply of ironwood for his armies. I'm told there are others who would happily serve that purpose, but I trust we can rely on House Forrester. Forrester Ironwood does seem rather unique. Yes, Your, yes, Grace. Your Grace. 
It would be a shame to see it fall into the hands of another house. I imagine you'd do almost anything to prevent that from happening, wouldn't you? Ask any Lannister, and they'd do whatever was necessary to save Casterly Rock. It would be unfortunate to see another house lay claim to what's yours. Yes, yes Your Grace. I would do anything. I see. What would you have the girl do, Cersei? It's not as if she fought beside the Starks, wielding a battle axe for the Northern Army. It raises an interesting question, I suppose. Can we truly blame those who end up on the wrong side of the war? Our dear Marjorie here was betrothed to Renly Baratheon on the false assumption that he would one day rule the Seven Kingdoms. Can we fault her for her mistake? Should she be held accountable? I won't judge her, Your Grace. I wasn't there. I didn't face her decisions. Aren't you a delightful girl? If only one could flit through life without ever holding an opinion of their own. If there's a point to this, I hope you find it quickly. Loyalty can be such a hard thing to define. This city alone is filled with all sorts of ambitious opportunists looking to reinvent themselves. Pretending to be something they're not. Who knows what lurks within their hearts. If you are a girl from the North, here in service to Lady Marjorie, one can only assume her interests are yours. Yet loyalty to a king, that must be absolute, beyond question. And if your loyalties were to become conflicted between your king and the very person whom you serve, what would you do then? I'm sure Let she would... Let the girl answer the question. That's a Go on. One. Um... Oh, oh, shit! Evading the question won't help her cause. Oh, Who do I'm you screwed. choose? I, I must choose Marjorie, yep. Your Grace. Clearly your handmaiden does not have her priorities straight. What? I'm she is a threat to the crown, isn't she? I'm screwed. <laughs> the most dangerous handmaiden in all of King's Landing. <laughs> oh no. My sense is this girl will say almost anything to get what she wants. Which is not very encouraging. I'd like a word with you, if I may. Of course, Your Grace. Oh, I am screwed. I'll walk you out. This may come as a surprise, but I met your father once, at the tourney at Lannisport. Even then he didn't trust Drews Bolton. We only spoke briefly, but your father struck me as an honorable man. You have my condolences for his loss. These would be trying times for your family, even under the best of circumstances. Thank you, Lord Tyrion. That's very kind of you to say. You were brave to declare your loyalty to Lady Marjorie. No doubt she was pleased, but Cersei, she will not soon forget what you said. Oh, that bitch. It was quite the first impression. I, of course, found it all highly entertaining, but it certainly wasn't what Cersei was expecting. I don't particularly like her. <laughs> that was fairly apparent to everyone. My sister and I have our differences. She takes great pleasure in her little charades. I take mine in thwarting them. We must find our amusements where we can. She threatened to give your ironwood to another house. It is the master of coin who decides such matters. The crown needs boats. Boats need wood, and I speak for the crown in this regard. Not her. You can help my family. I suppose the Crown could be persuaded to secure Ironwood from House Forrester. Lady Marjorie might not look favorably on such an alliance. And it would infuriate Cersei. Although what would be amusing for me might prove rather dangerous for you and your house. Are you willing to risk that? It may be far too dangerous. In fact, forget I even suggested such a thing. It's a risk I'm willing to take, Lord Tyrion. Please. You are a brave girl, aren't you? I'll consider it. 
Now, if you'll excuse me, I promised Sansa I would join her for dinner tonight. Three beautiful bottles of Dornish wine await my arrival. The mere thought of them makes me thirsty already. I hope we meet again. Nothing would make Cersei happier. Until then, be careful. This is not the North. King's Landing can be a nest of vipers to the uninitiated. Mira, I was worried. How was it? Cersei has a way of looking at you as though you're nothing. Not it didn't go very well. I'm sorry. Cersei is known for being rather difficult. But at least it's over now. Lady Marjorie has spent the entire day working on seating arrangements for the wedding. Of course, you and I are seated way at the back. Here with the fourth cousins and the ninth born sons. Ah, Sir Jamie. I wouldn't mind tarnishing that white cloak of his. Sarah! <laughs> what? It's true. And over in Martell, the Red Viper. Oh, okay. I'm told he has a paramour. Uh, which I doubt is Dornish for wife. Um, Put okay. it back. Oops. We're just having yeah. a bit of fun. I, I didn't know she would sound that aggressive. I've heard he's a bit perverse. Perhaps Lady Marjorie could make the right introductions. Who knows? We might meet our future husbands. Although, marrying a king, I can only imagine what that would be like. Yeah, he's gonna be a royal drunk. Would you marry Joffrey <laughs> if it meant you'd become queen? What, that sick little He does have a certain no, look about him. And he's always treated Lady Marjorie well. Which is more than you can say for his mother. I'd be willing to marry, but not Joffrey. Well, I would marry him. Imagine the power you would have as Queen of the Seven Kingdoms. Uh. I might even allow you to be my handmaiden. Let's see, who else should we marry off? Brienne of Tarth and Tyrion Lannister. <laughs> what a perfect match! Sir Bronn and... What are you doing? Well? I'm sorry, my lady. As am I. We shouldn't have been messing about. This is not a game. It's a battle plan. Allies and enemies can be made with every move. Yet they say it is men who are powerful. The Queen was... Rather disappointed by your display, Mira. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm just glad it's there. over. King's Landing can be exhausting sometimes. There's always someone to please or some perceived slight to smooth over. I fear it will only get worse when I am queen. Once I know your true heart, the lords and ladies will have no choice but to love you. Do you agree? People are not always so easy to please. What? If you showed Cersei your true heart, she would stab it with a fork. Whoa! I, I you didn't learn that. very quickly. Whoa! Damn, what Your the words fuck? to Cersei were brave, but I know you must fear what the Boltons might do to your family. I do appreciate your willingness to appease her, as difficult as it may have been. Thank you, my lady. There's been something on my mind. Something important. Uh, let's ask her for help. I... I did have a favor to ask of you in return. Whatever you wish to say, you can say it in front of Sarah. There are no secrets between us. It's about my family. I trust her. Sarah looks like the type that would... <laughs> yeah, I prefer to speak alone. I prefer to speak with you alone. Yeah, definitely. She just looked like the type that would gossip around.
Go on. Ask. Please, Ramsay Snow is on his way to Ironrath to see my brother bend the knee. Ramsay? Roose Bolton's bastard? I fear my family will suffer if Ramsay is left to do as he likes. But if a raven could be sent to the Boltons to let them know House Forrester has the protection of the Crown... That is no small request. Especially now. Joffrey knows only too well your family fought for the Starks. And now you would have me ask him to intervene? Is the situation that dire? Joffrey will not look favorably on such a request. I will forever be in your debt. My family will forever be in your debt. I don't know, Mira. If Cersei were to find out... Um, you're adored by the king? Don't let the queen bully you. Whoa, you have power what? over him, Lady Marjorie, as no one else does. Not even his mother. Ramsay Snow like will arrive at Ironrath within the so week. Aggressive. I would never ask this of you if it weren't so urgent. Very well. I'll make your request, but I cannot promise anything. Thank you, my lady. I will send a raven to my family at once. Did you know my ancestors wore the skins of their enemies as a coat? <gasps> Not my best work, unfortunately. I suppose I have full enough practice. But he didn't make it easy. What with all that bloody noise? <laughs> like a drowning cat. I thought he'd never stop. As my father likes to say, a naked man holds few secrets. But the flayed man, the flayed man holds none. Pity he didn't know your father was the Warden of the North. He does now. How much further is it to these foresters? Uh, a day, my lord. Two at most. What was that? Lord? Shh! Listen! There. Hear that? I know I heard something. Never mind. We've wasted enough time already. Ethan! 
As I was saying, you are young. And there are those within these walls who are uncertain of your leadership. But 300 generations of forester lords stand behind you. Lord Gerhard the Tall, who founded our house. And your grandfather, Lord Thorin the Bold, who seized back the river valley from the White Hills. What did they call my father? Lord Gregor the Good. He was fair and wise and courageous in battle. I want to be like that, like my father. Your father was well regarded by nearly everyone. It took years, if not decades, to earn. These were your father's people to lead and protect, and now they're yours. But your father did not bear this responsibility alone. He and every forester lord before him chose one man whom they trusted above all others. The Lord Sentinel. Forester traditions demand that a new Lord Sentinel must be chosen. Hmm. A Sentinel. Okay. Keep walking, you craven son of a whore. Move! Summon the Lord! We need his judgment. I've done nothing wrong! I was only trying to survive! Lord Ethan. Miss. Why did you kick this man? This craven is a deserter and a thief. This house is doomed! We all fucking know it! Oh, quiet, this is on thief. Fort Woods. Eric Fort was supposed to be guarding our weapons, but instead we caught him stealing them. Two shields and three spears. Why did you do it? Because I've no wish to die. Yes, my lord. I fled. We should all flee. It's not stealing if you're taking what's yours by right. He speaks He's truth. Right. I've a family to feed. And not two coins to rub together since Lord Gregor left us to rot here. Where's our pay? Our share of bread and wine grows smaller every day. <laughs> Leave the poor man alone! Mercy. Lord Ethan, I know these words are hard, but they're honest. This house is falling. We'll never survive the coming winter. Most of us won't even live to see it. Calm yourself. Calm yourself. But, whoa. The time for calm passed with the late Lord Forrester. Now there's only chaos. <clears throat> You'll address him as Lord. Lord Ethan, you must decide the punishment. Lord Gregor always took a thief's fingers. Three of them. Now may not be the time for harsh punishment. The men are on edge as it is. Men need to know they cannot do whatever the fuck they please. Their lord will not permit it. We can send him to the war. Of choice. Mercy, my lord. He stole from us. He deserved it. Make him pay. I will decide. Send him to the war. Take his fingers! He's a thief! Should I cut off his If you punish me, I... you'll be punishing an innocent man. It will be an injustice, my lord. Please, my lord. My family depends on me. Well, if I send him to the wall, he can't exactly help his family, and if I take three fingers from him, he still can't help his family, so I'll show him mercy. Our house tends to its people. See, this man is paid and his family is fed. Lord Ethan, you are truly a merciful and noble wow. lord. My lord, this man is a criminal. Well, why do I get booed? A brazen thief. Uh, he still serves House Forrester and deserves our protection. He's a rat in our grain stores. My lord, we must speak about our gold reserves. Soon. My lord. I thank you for the mercy you've shown me. I will never forget my debt to you and to this house. That was certainly unpleasant, but a lord must meet our punishment when it's due. Not just yourself, of course. Oh, man. You can weigh on any lord. Maester. 
What do you think? Me? Yes. Did I do what's right? Disloyalty shouldn't be rewarded if others will take advantage of your mercy. You heard what the thief said. I expect this sort of thing will happen again. But a sentinel can help you in the face of disloyalty. You need someone you can trust by your side. Someone you can rely on, no matter the circumstance. Possessing wisdom and experience. Who do you think I should choose? There are two capable men for the role. Oh. They both want the job, but neither thinks very highly of the other. How do I decide between them? Talk to them. Solicit the opinion of people close to you. Here. The Bracer of the Sentinel. The Badge of Office. Tonight is your first small council meeting. It would be wise to bestow this Bracer upon your chosen Sentinel then, to show that you are decisive and in control of this house. Your Sentinel will wear this for all to see. Take it. Thank you. Thank you for your counsel, Maester. It is my duty. Come speak with me when you're ready to convene the small council, my lord. Hmm. Who should I choose? Let's see, let's see. Maester? Yes, Lord Ethan. Are you prepared to name your sentinel? What is it you're doing over here? Admiring the ironwood, my lord. I studied it at the Citadel. The wood may be black, but I see gold. An entire forest of gold. What do you mean? It is our greatest asset, my lord. Why not give some of our ironwood to House Bolton and have them leave us be? We could ransom ourselves. You can hardly put a price on your own life, or the lives of those you love. How much do we have to give, Maester? From here to Wolfswood Creek, and then across the next two ridges, it should be enough to satisfy Ramsay Snow, I imagine. Bloodlust can often be sated by gifts and gold. Our provisions are rather low, my lord. I made the count again, just to be sure. Eric said people were going to starve. Why can't we feed them? The war has taken its toll. Even our own stores for the house are dwindling. We couldn't withstand a siege, my lord. If the Boltons or the White Hills cut us off and wait us out, we'd only last a fortnight. But there are steps we can take. In the past, we've demanded food from the small folk to replenish our stores. We can do it again, if you'd like. We've done it before in desperate times. The last long winter, my family had to give all our pigs to the house. No. There must be something else we can do. Well, I hope we find it soon. We won't have much room to maneuver if we don't have the option of holding fast. I can speak to the huntsmen and trappers. Perhaps they can do more. My lord. Duncan. Yes, my lord. I have much to consider and face a difficult decision. Perhaps I can help. Your father often sought my counsel. As Lord, I must name a sentinel. Of course. And if I may ask, who do you favor for the role? Hmm. Perhaps I can share my insight. And talking can sometimes help you make a decision. Actually, I wanted to ask, why did you send Garrett away? I did it for your own protection, my lord. Garrett had to go. By sending him away myself, I thought it would keep you blameless in the eyes of the White Hills. I only hope to give you an advantage, and I regret any action you disapprove of. That's a clever strategy. Yeah, should I should have sent off I do hope that's a good thing, my lord. Wall? Thank you, Duncan. I appreciate your advice. I'm at your service, my lord. Ethan. Or should I say Lord Ethan? Hello, Uncle Malcolm. I saw what you did today. It's not an easy thing to do. Showing mercy to a man who admits his guilt. But if you'll excuse me, my lord, I should finish packing before nightfall. I hope to be off tomorrow. At first light. But where are you going? 
Your mother asked me to cross the narrow sea to find your brother, Asher. Asher? She has asked me to return with him, to help the house. She said nothing of this to me. Because she fears you will not agree. I told her my place is here, that I'll be of no help to you in Essos. But she insisted. I will hold, of course, until you've spoken with her about this. Just try to be kind to her. She's been living a nightmare made real. But you know that just as well. She's my mother. Of course I'll be gentle. I know you will. You're good-hearted, my lord. That is your true strength. But my mother's fears are not the only ones I face. My people are scared as well. I'm told I must choose a sentinel. If I may be so bold, Sir Royland is the man for the job. He'd be a fine choice. And I'd trust him. Aye, Sir Royland is the man you want. Why Sir Royland? We are at war. You need a warrior by your side. Royland has the respect of his men and will bring strength and discipline to this house. Duncan would offer sage advice, but now is not the time to negotiate. Not with the likes of Ramsay Snow. Thank you, Uncle. Okay. Ethan, I need to talk to you. Whoa. Okay, that's real sudden. Mother told me Mira has asked for Lady Marjorie's help. Did she? I knew we could rely on Mira. She always thinks of family above all else. Hopefully Lady Marjorie's influence will be enough. But right now I'm more concerned about you. I saw what you did to that man. I can't afford any more mistakes. Everyone knows what happened with Lord Whitehill. Garrod being sent to the wall without my knowledge. I know. And that wasn't your fault. I'm the Lord. It's my responsibility. The people want me to lead. They need me to, but... What? Ethan, please. Tell me. What do you suggest I do? You must be strong. Decisive. You are the Lord of this house. Remember, you're just as capable as Asher or Roderick ever were. I know it. I only wish you did too. You've always given me good advice. Thank you. Sword up! Swing left! Sorry! Wrong! I didn't know Sir dogs could hold swords. A word? Of course, my lord. I have many decisions to make, and I wanted your advice. What's the state of our defences? Are these men ready for what's coming? This lot? Ready? No, but they will be. We post anyone who can hold a spear along the parapet, up where they won't get much scrutiny, and put our meanest, nastiest-looking brutes front and centre. That'll show Ramsay we're a force in our own right. You've got to project power. Especially when you're weak. Thank you, Sir Royland. I'll let you get back to training these men. Thank you, my lord. And uh, I'll be sure to watch out for more deserters. After today, I suspect there'll be more to come. Careful. Keep at it and you won't have much left. Something to pick your teeth with. No, Ethan. Look at this. All good swords have a name. I call mine Two Brothers. I carved this to give me strength. And this... So I remember. I mean, I could never forget, but... Oh, you know, don't you? I'm honoured. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Someday, I'll have a real one. But not like that one. Only a lord could have that sword. You'll have a good sword. I'm sure of it. I watched you today. I saw what you did to that man. Was he our enemy? A bad man? Everyone keeps talking about them. Enemies. Talia told me what it means. No, he's not our enemy. But he did a bad thing. Then I wish you'd hurt him. People who do bad things need to be punished. Mm. Someone did something bad to Father and Roderick. Someone should hurt them even well, worse. Sometimes it's I want a real sword. Simple. No one's afraid of oh. wood. 
I'll find the men who took Roderick someday, and I'll make sure I have a real sword when I do. My lord, are you now ready to name your sentinel? Hmm. Yes, Maester. I'm ready. Very well. I will convene the small council at once. You may sit. I believe Lord Ethan has reached his decision. Before I name my sentinel, I must tell you. Duncan, Royland, this house needs you both. But you can only choose one, my lord. Let him be on with it. Many thought either of you would make a fine sentinel. But I have made my decision. Yep. So, Royland. Sir Royland de Gore, you will be my sentinel. God be praised. You've done well, Lord Ethan. You won't regret this. A poor choice, my lord. Forgive me for saying so, but it's true. Now, sentinel. What do you have to report of Ramsey Snow? My scouts say he's a day's ride away. We've no time to waste. He'll arrive before any of our allies could be here. Who knows what he's capable of? We need to prepare for the worst. We can devise a plan to deal with him. The Boltons need our people to harvest the ironwood. Even the bastard Ramsey must understand that. He's not coming here to negotiate. We must answer with the sword. That's bloody suicide. You gamble with the lives of everyone within these walls. Quiet, Tuttle. You're not the Sentinel. I knew this would happen. He cannot be trusted. This is the small council, is it not? Let Duncan speak. I'd like to hear what he has to say. Duncan? I'm sorry, Lord Ethan. You have chosen your Sentinel. You should hear from him first. What? The Bolton Sigil is a flayed man. Force is the only thing they understand. Put every man who can hold a spear or crossbow on the wall, and make the bastard fill his boots with piss. He would see it for the empty gesture that it is, and have us flayed. We must take a measured approach, my lord. Gentlemen, please. Oh no. Man, I'm Thank the gods to... Mira has Man, asked Lady Marjorie oh. for her help. Man, it's not to... too late for the crown to intervene on our behalf, but we must have a plan if Mira's efforts are not successful. I trust Mira's judgment. I don't doubt she did everything within her power to help us. Mother, what do you recommend we do? We must give him whatever he wants and be done with it. It's too dangerous to do otherwise. Why not make an offering for peace, my lord? Yeah, the wisdom of the Citadel. We can give the Boltons ironwood in exchange for their protection. You must be mad. It's pure folly to just give away the only currency we have to bargain with. Enough! Although Sir Royland may object, I shall use diplomacy with Lord Snow. I would be foolish to pick a fight without negotiating first. I'll offer our allegiance and try to reach a reasonable agreement. If you aren't ready for a fight, you're bound to lose when one breaks out. Ethan has made his opinion known and you will respect his decision. Forgive us, my lord. We are, of course, here to serve you, as we served your father. Aye. Well then, let's decide how we shall set the stage for Ramsay's arrival. Invite him into this hall, and meet him face to face, lord to lord. Ramsay Snow is no lord. That's absurd. You meet him at the gate with as much force as we can muster. Make him wait. Let him gaze upon Ironrath, 
And when he enters, he'll know it's only because you allowed it. Lord Ethan? I will meet him in the Great Hall. It's careless. Can't you see Tuttle is steering you wrong? You'll lead us into ruin! I've faithfully served this house for far too long to sit here and listen to this. You're likely to get us all killed. Sit down at once. Damn. I, I can't wish I could use my both son. of their plans. But now that uh. it is settled, we know what we must do. You will meet Ramsay Snow in the Great Hall, yes, and, and we will not offer our ironwood. And if you do no matter what, funny, we'll I will stand beside you, my all. lord, where your sentinel belongs. Yeah, sounds good. Then perhaps we should adjourn. We have to prepare the house. Hmm. My lord, you have named your sentinel, but you still seem conflicted. And no matter what, oh, you can't be yeah. indecisive. Not if you want to help this house. Forgive me. Uh, maybe I should have named him the There Sentinel. will always be those who question your leadership. Oh, which is why you need allies you can rely on. Family. Mira has done everything she can in King's Landing, but there are others who can help us. What about your brother, Asher? Malcolm told me. You want to bring him back? He's a skilled fighter. But what's more, he has the will to fight. A hunger for it. He always protected you and your sister. And we need all the help we can get. Yes, I hear what you're saying. Do you remember the Miller's boy? How he tormented you? I wanted to intervene, but your father said, Ethan must fight his own battles. But when Asher saw it, he didn't take a breath. He grabbed the Miller's boy by the neck. That was his first instinct. Asher knocked out half the poor boy's teeth. Of course, your father was furious, but you were in danger and there was nothing else Asher needed to know. Asher does not hesitate. He acts, and we need that. You have many fine qualities, but you do not have that anger inside you. It's something we could use. I'm not like that, but I don't need to be, do I? No, but you need someone who is standing beside you. I'm trying to do what's best for this family, what this family needs. Ethan, let me send Malcolm to Essos. Yeah, Fine. Sure. Malcolm will go to Essos and bring Asher back. Thank you, Ethan. I'm glad you will let me do this. Know that you never stand alone. You are a forester. Mira stands with us, and she may be able to help us yet. Well, let's, let's just hope she would be. Okay, I think that's it for this episode. And I'm gonna stop right here. See you guys in the next episode. Bye.